Oh, really, dude? What's this? Okay, I'm trying out this prototype I made with the Max. I think it's either the 2323 or the 3232. It's a RS-232. It's so like plus or minus up to 10 volts to UART, 3 or 5 volt logic and power. Um, so this is the breakup board on here, and I've got it wired up to my Metro Mini. So I'm powering it from 3 or 5 volts. And then over here, I've got this really handy um, cable, which I think I'll also stock. So it's USB, and it gives you um, RS-232, so like, you know, high voltage, and then also a UART level if needed. But it's great because you can see the LED. And then what I've done is I've wired this up in like a loopback mode. So the TX goes in here, goes over here, and then there's like a little bridge, and then back to the RX. And ditto with the CTS and RTS lines. Sorry, RTS, yeah, RTS and CTS. So I can, you know, always test this with um, URTTL, but the easier way is just to use um, this uh, XCTU, which lets me, you know, if I type something, it shows me that I've sent a character and it's echoed back. And then when I click the RTS line, you see the CTS line toggles with it. So now I know that it's working great. So this is going to be really handy for people doing um, retro tech or interfacing with RS-232 technologies. Um, so it'll be in the shop soon. All right, lady, dude, what's this? Okay, I'm testing out my new HUSB-238 Type-C power delivery chip. This time, instead of using just I2C, although this does have an I2C connection, you can use this like really tiny but still very usable dip switch selector to determine which voltage you want. So I have this plugged into um, a USB PD power supply, and you can see on the side here it says what voltages it can do. So it can do like 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20. So when I plug this in here, so then I've got my multimeter set up uh, to measure the output voltage. It's got five volts. And then if I get my little, where'd my screwdriver go? Oh, here it is. A little screwdriver that I can use. So let me um, turn off the five volts and instead set it to nine. So now I've got nine volt output. And then I can select 12 volt output. And then I can try. 15, that word works. And then remember, this one doesn't support 18. So when I select 15, it actually, uh, so if I, I select 18 on the dip switch, it actually goes back to 15 because it uses the highest available within the request. And then 20. Um, so you got a little LED to let you know that the power is good, those little dip switches. And then, of course, if you want to, you know, customize um, selecting the voltage dynamically, you can use I2C. So this is all assembled, ready to go. So it's a great little USB Type-C power delivery dummy board. Um, with dip switch selectable voltage. All right, Lady Ada, what's this? Hey, we got a request to make an IR transceiver that's not IRDA. It's literally just like transmit and receive 38 kilohertz IR. So this is two IR LEDs, and you'll notice they're actually not blinking right now because um, I didn't connect the transmit. And then this is the infrared receiver, and so it decodes 38 kilohertz IR signal, and then um, to make it easy to mount it and connect, I put a JSTPH connector on. And then I've got this demo running um, using this Metro Mini from the IR remote library, which is a great library. And so what's nice is I actually really like the um, little uh, LEDs on here. You can see when I press the remote, the in LED lights up. And then this is the transmit pins. So when I connect that, you'll see both blink because it's transmitting, and now you can see the IR LED is transmitting, and of course the receiver is picking up uh, the output from this. And so you can see it's now in kind of a loopback mode where it's like sending data, receiving data. Um, this is good, it means it all works. So this will be really handy for people who want to make you know, something that transmits and receives infrared remote signal, uh, having all in one with a little debug output um, LED as well. So it should make it really easy to mount and create uh, infrared projects. So coming soon to the Adafruit shop. All right, Lady Ada, what's this? Okay, so this is this little doodad from Ikea called the Vindrinkting. And this is a PM2 sensor, and you can see the PM2 sensor with, uh, here's the PM2 sensor, and a fan, and close a little box, and there's a tiny little uh, SOIC8 microcontroller on here, powered by USB-C. It reads the data from the PM2.5, controls the fan, and then it lights up red, yellow, green LEDs. It looks like there's also like an IR LED, either input or output 
um, here as well. Um, so it's a little standalone board for air quality sensing, but like, of course, you know, let's internetify it. So um, I'm helping out Liz, who's doing most of the project, um, but we're making a layout board for an ESP32 S2 module. And then at the bottom here, you've got the USB-C, boot and reset buttons, NeoPixels, so you'll be able to do more than just red, yellow, and green, connectors for the PM2.5 and Molex, and then also I2C sensor if you want to add more sensors like temperature and humidity. And then you'll be able to connect it to Home Assistant or Adafruit IO or just to your very own network or have it send emails. So it'll be a um, IoTified version of the sensor. And the cool thing is you'll be able to just unplug these parts, plug in the new board, no soldering required, um, just put it back together and uh, it'll work as is, but now even better with internet. And that's top secret.